January 7th, 3 p.m. Friends get ready to watch football, then mysteriously vanish for two days. Is this a terrible mistake? Or were the victims murdered? That's tonight on Astrology and Crime. Outside this home late Tuesday, January 9th, 2024. It's been three weeks since three Kansas City fans joined friends to watch the Chiefs play the Los Angeles Chargers in the final game of the regular season. Their bodies were found in a friend's backyard two days later. Police still haven't said how the, the men died, but affirmed Saturday amid intense public speculation that they still have no evidence of foul play. It's common for police to decline to comment much on an investigation before it's complete. So here's a look at what's known and not known in a mystery that has gained widespread spread attention on social media and the internet, despite or perhaps because of the lack of solid information. So real quick, uh, police accounts say Ricky Johnson, Clayton McGinney, McGinney, and David Harrington went to the home of a friend to watch the Chiefs game on January 7th. None of them made it home. Two nights later, McGinney's fiance went to the home looking for him. When there's no answer at the door, she broke into the basement of the residence and located an unknown dead body on the back porch. Officers responded to the back porch and confirmed there was a dead body. I mean, can you imagine that? I mean, she will always be traumatized by that. Upon further investigation, officers located two other dead bodies in the backyard. And I'm trying to think that through. Like, how could there, they have been not all together if they were freezing? So it makes me think that they might have died before that happened. There were no obvious signs of foul play observed at or near the crime scene except when they went to the door. Uh, police say there are no signs that any crime was committed and it still remains a death investigation and nothing more. We still have no evidence or indication of foul play. No one is in police custody. How did they die? Investigators say they don't know yet. They have not said publicly whether they believe drugs or alcohol were involved in what might have been three relatively sudden and simultaneous deaths. So it's clear that that's a possibility they are considering. Weather records indicate the low temp that night was around 33 degrees. This incident has been gathering a significant amount of media attention. All right. Yeah. So I'm getting Knight of Cups. What do you guys think about that? This is like a, somebody who's thinking about Valentine's Day. Um, could this potentially, he's got tats and stuff and roses. Could this be somebody who maybe owns the house, went to the house. And what's really strange is that we were told that there were two more people. Oh, sorry guys. All right, so what will happen? This is a very strong chart. You've got a kite that's going really way up high and then something that is pulling it back, if you can see that. And just wanna make sure you can see that. Right. First of all, before we even start, I'd be really interested to know what you think of the fact that we got a Knight of Cups to start this show. You know, who who's romancing whom? This is a this is a sports event at someone's home. It's a guy's day. Why is now remember romance is Leo, so we, we're getting a lot of Leo energy for some reason. And Leo means athletes, it means sports, so. And it also means five, it's, that's the number for Leo, which is five. Now we know, I think that there are six. So maybe five people are embroiled in this and one person is not. Maybe he really did go to sleep, like he said. The weird part was that he answered the door, according to reports, in his underwear, holding an empty glass of wine in the middle of the day. Not that that's abnormal, but the police saw him as they opened the door and he said he had been sleeping for two days. Really odd stuff. Horary, what will happen? Well, I'm going to look at this as a crime chart and look at the ascendant. This is going to be a major clue. Gemini, I'd say people are talking. People are going to be talking a lot. 
and Mercury is a group. Mars is somebody that's right next to that group, and it's at 18 degrees, which is the devil degree. It adds three sixes. There you go. So there is somebody in there that is not supposed to be in there or added himself to the group. Eighth house will re represent victims. It'll represent the profile of victims. And in Capricorn, this will show either death or show that the victims might have been uh, you know, a little bit older, over 35. Then you have Heart of Fortune. Heart of Fortune is a group of successful people, a group of successful older men. And I always like to look at the cusp of the eighth house, which can represent the murderer. And the Lord of the murderer is up here, Saturn, and it's in Pisces. So it's a person who might like drugs or alcohol. And it's so high up in the chart. So in the 10th house, we're going to be seeing this person talking. Um, we're also going to be seeing a lawyer too. So we can see that Saturn is somebody who might have some secrets because of Pisces. Uh, might have Pisian, a Pisian profile. So that's a possible. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, seriously, you guys are uh, responding to the Knight of Cups. It's uh, maybe a fight about love. Yeah, maybe somebody, somebody took somebody else's woman. But what the families are saying is that, you know, they think that maybe they saw something. What do you think they could have seen? In fact, I think that might be a good one for Tarot, not to be... Uh, I'm focused here because we're in this coronary chart, but let's take a look at a card one more time. What could this group have seen? And here we go. Oh, we got that last time, King of Wands. So this is somebody who's like a boss of something. That's all I can say. Somebody who is authoritative and uh, seems to have it all. So... Um, so they, what they saw was perhaps somebody who was very powerful in some way. All I was really saying was this next part, it seems like people are speaking out. That's what the answer to this horror area is. What will happen next in this case? Mercury is, we're going to hear a lot of information about the, um, about the victims. Eighth house, what's in the eighth house is the victims. And so we have somebody in there and the eighth house is secrets too. So guess who's in there? I think the news is in there. They're getting the information. Somebody's digging and doing it very well. How do we know Mercury is conjunct part of fortune? So it shows that the news is successful. These could be a group of, obviously this represents the victims, but it can also represent a group of very, uh, I would say, very um, successful news people who were kind of old school, Capricorn is old school news people. So they are getting the goods and they're going to find out potentially that the 12th house is the secrets and Uranus and Taurus is financial secrets. Now, uh, and there's this nice big blue grand trine. What does that mean? That usually means a lot of success in something. So I think that something is being, being uncovered here. Eighth house is deep research. The, the news is researching news people, the journalists, the eighth house investigative Mercury uh, journalists. And they are looking at this group, which would be Mercury, of people, older guys in Capricorn, but with, I'm going to say this one person next to them is this Mars at 18. 18 is 666. And I would like to know what will be uncovered by the media for the, the investigative journalists that I'm seeing here. Let's see if I can pull a card and my audio. Okay. So what will investigative journalists, if they are, they manage to get more information, 
since law enforcement is not able to give it yet, what kind of information will they get? Okay. Reverse Ace of Cups. Oh, so, okay. Uh, well, there's a heart in the middle of Ace of Cups. And remember, it's reverse. So usually an Ace of Cups is pretty positive. It's having everything that you want. And it's great success. It's a woman holding that, by the way. But it's it's cuppeth runneth, runneth over. It's success, but it reverses. So what I read into that is that maybe somebody isn't doing so well in their career. I can just see some journalists coming out and saying, you know, such and such had to declare bankruptcy back in 2018, something like that. So that would be an example, I think, of, and I'm not saying that's it, but Ace of Cups would be a reversal of uh, something that seemed to be very successful. Oh, that's right. That's right. Eighth house was research. Okay. An affair. Okay. So in all of these crimes, you always have some kind of, it's, it's a theme. So when you have something like host answers the door in his underwear and a, an empty glass of wine, well, okay, that's kind of, that's Neptune. It's like private things. So eighth house types of stuff, things you're not supposed to see. It's somebody waking up. It could be somebody lying. We don't know. So that's one thing. But then you've got the AIDS research. So AIDS would be Neptune. Oh, so Saturn and Neptune is in that chart. Uh, that's somebody's responsibility. And research would be eight. So we're getting a lot of eight here, a lot of researching. And I think one of the signals for these early signs, of course, frozen is another theme too. It could be that maybe these journalists are going to look a little bit more into the past of this, this supposed scientist, this reported scientist. So, um, Samara, you say you should do a chart for three to see what it says for your show sound. <laughs> oh my God. Let's see what it says for my show sound. And then what we're going to do is go on to the, uh, it's basically a birth chart, but it's the solar return chart for one of the victims. Let's see what it says for my sound. I could, we could potentially get freaked out by this if it's spiritual related. All right. So this is for Val's sound. Seven of swords. Yep. That's about right. <laughs> At least I've got the full moon on my side, which is you guys always kind, and nice. And me up there <laughs> with a hoodie and uh, in the snow. But the spring is coming, I promise. Now, hmm, interesting. That I didn't think about that. I don't know. I don't think so. I think the uh, AIDS comes from loves. I wonder if that's the connection because the families are saying that they might have seen something or heard something. Maybe, maybe somebody found out something about some research. And that is really prominent in that horror chart of what's going to come out next. And I'm going to share it. Oh, and Pluto is in there. That's got to be AIDS too, because definitely it's research about things that, uh, I mean, I mean, have a sexual type of origin. So there's so much, I mean, this is a lot. And you could actually, if you were to take away the clues of, let's say we don't look at this anymore as the victims and that evil person, but we look at part of fortune is right next to 
Mercury. So speaking of success and it's next to Pluto, that's, this is massive success here. Uh, and, but it's something that has to do with research. Something is coming out potentially that's, that could be very famous yet with Black Moon Lilith. Uh, maybe it's not all that it seems. And, but Marian, you're saying that there's some kind of romance involved. Now here's a female that also knows this person. This is Saturn. This could be a lawyer. This could be somebody who might later on be branded as the person responsible. Saturn means responsibility. And so we have a trine to this female. Now the female could be uh, darker skin, dark eyes, dark hair, uh, older. And Jupiter rules open enemies and significant others. Okay. I definitely think there's a relationship there's some kind of relationship theme here, especially with South Node leaving a relationship. I don't know. So I think the press is probably going to take a look at the background of the researcher, obviously the background of all of the victims, and then try to connect the dot, dot see who had a relationship with whom. Obviously, these are really good family men, so there's not going to be a lot of hijinks, I don't think, with the victims themselves. It just doesn't seem, doesn't seem right to me. Yeah, I know. I think everybody thought that initially, because it's almost like, oh, they were poisoned and then they were, they were pulled out of there. I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people thought that. There definitely seems to be that suspicion Okay. I think it was something in the research. Okay. Blaming it on fentanyl was too easy. Okay. Maybe he got fired from his job and that would show, uh, that would show, cause in this chart, you see a downfall, that dreaded opposition. Okay. So this is a person up here maybe the person responsible, and he fell in his work. Something happened where he, you know, it's very possible that things were said because of alcohol and then other things were regretted from that, from that information. But this definitely seems like, remember, Virgo was health. So health, public health, moon is public, Virgo is health, so bad public health, and it, and it makes this person fall. That, that's not necessarily what will happen next, meaning that we're going to hear information about it, but it's definitely a background in that chart. Now, looking at the solar return chart for a victim and not having the time, you can't really do the calendar like I did last time because I think I rectified that chart pretty well. This one I don't think is correct with the with regard to the time frame. Like normally we could say, well, this is September and the second house is October, but we can't really with this one. It's a little trickier. What this shows is that one of the victims had certain squares in his chart. So we're really only going to be able to look at the subjects or the, uh, I'm sorry, the planets. We can't look at the houses. We can also look at the zodiac signs. Now, this is going to show that the victim will die this year and sorry to say it like that. And Saturn retrograde is a person in this person's life and it's in Pisces. So this person is retrograde. 
So possibly a friend or somebody in their, in their environment that year that is not doing so well. And what's so interesting is the visual you're getting. This person here, again, the person responsible, not doing so well, especially in Pisces. If, if you've got retrograde that year, and remember, this is just for the year. He's potentially going to have Saturn direct next year, and it'll give it a whole different energy. But in this case, with retrograde, um, it is, it, it's like somebody who drinks too much, somebody who parties too much. And that person can be in that, in this chart holder's life. And that could be any, anybody, depending on what house it's in. If it's in the third house, it's going to be your neighbor or your, or your sibling. If it's going to be in your sixth house. It's going to be that coworker. They never show up because they're always drunk, you know, or, uh, you know, maybe in the seventh house where, you know, you're dealing with your partner who just, you know, can't stop after two glasses, has to have three or four on a regular basis or every night or whatever. And so it just depends on who this is. We can't really figure that out with this, at least according to my research now. I think sometimes it still give a, gives us answers. Like if we were to see the time that I pulled, maybe it's telling us that this is a hidden enemy. But I don't want to make it too complicated. Now, let's go back to this. Now, this is the solar chart. So look at the opposition with the group. Mercury is a group and it's retrograde. So he is going to have, he's going to have a retrograde in his chart. I mean, we all tend to, but a Mercury retrograde in the, car, in the chart can be very, uh, very challenging. And in Virgo can sometimes mean work. And Venus is retrograde. Another thing where it can show that maybe in Leo, uh, love of sports, um, but it's retrograde for some reason, and it's squaring Jupiter in Venus. So if this were a significant other, uh, this person might be having challenges somehow. Uh, it's a person with a lot of hair and, uh, I'm not sure what that is, but uh, it also can be your financial situation too. Finances aren't so great, but he has a trine here to moon, which can show some type of help. And I think Pluto is probably one of the bigger challenges for him. And you've got two squares, one, two, south node and one to north node with uh, Chiron and the moon. Now keep in mind what this chart is. This is the snapshot on basically the time he was born, but it was 2023. So it's a way of reading what's going to happen in your year. And we've got some squares here, square to moon in Aries. This is actually a lot of anger. If you if you can see that the Aries, moon and Aries can show that you're going to be pretty angry about something that year. And then Chiron shows some, there's some kind of wound. And where does the wound come from? Well, it looks like it's easy for them to be wounded because of black moon Lilith also in Leo. So sports was going to be a big theme for him this year. Leo showing a football game and that there would be Black Moon Lilith, a bad, potentially, my opinion only, not construed as fact. There's a, it seems to be some kind of bad energy, maybe even a person that's kind of sketch and a trine to to Aries. Somebody pretty, uh, could be pretty abusive, could say stuff that is angry and mean and hurts others. And so as this person is able to do this to this person, you know, Pluto is blocking it. It's like, don't do that. Don't do that. I, I refuse to allow this to happen. So this is happening. This is a successful person. 
uh, because I've got this here. Um, again, look at how Libra, see, you can, you could see that there is a relationship involved here because you've got point of fortune in Libra. That's a successful relationship. And then you have an opposition to the moon in Aries. Uh, so this could be something... Well, here's another thing. Aries, not only is Aries blood, but Venus is also blood. And you can see there's some clues there. And you know what, what happens with HIV? Blood is a major thing. So bad blood. Could this be the theme here? Something that has to do with bad blood. There you go. You're looking for another theme. Uh, that that's it right there. The host deals with bad blood. And so that's going to maybe next about, well, oh, thank you, Summer A. How nice. Very sweet of you. Thank you. Uh, in an affair sports. I think a lot of people thought that too. Gambling possibly involved. Leo is gambling. Venus is money. So gambling money and to ask, um, you know, maybe will there be arrests? And will there be arrests soon? Let's do it. Whoa. Page of Swords reversed. Interesting. Okay. So Page of Swords, it looks like, boy, doesn't that look like, well, first of all, it's female. Well, we keep getting females. What is it with uh, the last couple of shows? But uh, we also have a page of swords. Somebody that has a lot of ideas, who's researching a lot, and it got turned upside down. And also a page is somebody kind of junior. So is there a possibility that somebody's going to come out? Now, this doesn't really have to do with the arrest, but could this be a witness? Could a page be a witness? So much here. This is a lot of energy. That's a trine there. And this is in the victim soul return chart. So this would be a prediction of his year. So there's lots of flow here, yet something here could be could be betting could be because this is games leo is a game and games with money so there is a square there and also jupiter in taurus can be a lot of money so i noticed all of that leo up there which represents athletes and sports and so how interesting that you would have so many planets up there in the eighth house. Well, it's not eighth because I don't know his real birth time. So I'm just going to say, I'm, this is crazy. Uh, Mars again, next to Mercury. So interesting how this combination would be right around the time of his murder. And Mars at 25 degrees, 25 is the Mars degree. So that's double anger. There's a lot of anger about something. Uh, Venus in Leo can mean, can mean gambling, can mean, um, a woman who is a lover because of Leo. And we have a T square here. So you've got, whenever you're going to tap into that Leo, you're going to tap into the T square for him. Not everybody has a T square. Thank God but uh, a lot of people do. And uh, I, I do. A lot of people I know who are very successful do. You know, one of, not a T-square, but uh, I think it's Travis Kelsey has a T-square and Taylor Swift. And I'm going to look at her chart this week, by the way. She has an opposition, a big, big opposition in her. So a lot of people who do really well in life and have very good experiences. They still have these really tough 
aspects. But for him, he would have Pluto on the apex of, uh, of this T square. Sorry, I just zoned out trying to figure out what that meant. But uh, Pluto, this is a lot of money, you guys. Venus, square Pluto, that's debt. Not saying that one of the victims was had any debt issues, but may have seen, seen that theme through his life. Maybe he saw... No, sometimes it's just, you know, you've you've you're a bankruptcy lawyer, you know, that's sometimes what Scorpio can be. But really big, uh, I would say it's a stellium, which is very strong in Scorpio. And this is going to mean Saturn is is death. It is it can mean sadness and it can also mean lack of. So it could mean lack of credit. Sometimes there's just a big square. Maybe sometimes with a square, you want to have a lot of fun and you can't fund it. So that can happen. Um, all right. Billy's saying, could the six person that has not been made to the public, could it be the landlord? Could it be the one to drop off a delivery? Good call. I know. Yeah, we're going to do that one. Is there a food theme? Well, we've got two points in Taurus in this birth chart. And it is opposing uh, that Scorpio there. Black Moon Lilith again. Conjunct the North Node in Taurus. This is, again, financial stuff. Could be food. And are you guys hearing me? I hope you guys are okay. Some of you are hearing me, some not. Okay, thanks, hope and happiness for telling me that. I'm on replay. When you first were drawing the card for the Page of Swords reversed, I bet that's the homeowner wanting to collect when they came over after the game. But Page usually means uh, a younger person, doesn't it? So, uh, and it makes, it almost looks like a Harry Potter research assistant. Like, yeah, well, I worked with them before back in 2017 and, you know, blah, 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 you know, I, I'm thinking, and the question really was, will anyone be arrested? So we have to apply it to that. I don't know if that means the page of wands type is going to be arrested or if that person is going to be a witness. So we're going to try to figure that out. But so much in Leo, I mean, you, you're almost surprised that the person isn't an athlete because of so much Leo. The square can possibly show that he wanted to be an athlete, but with Saturn, there was no way he could be. So it was that square there. If he didn't have that square, it would have been a whole different story. Uh, with trining this Leo group, I mean, this really is a group. It's up here. And you have a trine to moon. And this is a famous group, famous group of sports people with a square to Pluto. Pluto is homicide. Pluto is debt related. Uh, moon and Mars is, is dealing with angry things, uh, an angry home, maybe. And, uh, actually it's, I don't know if it's in the fourth because I don't know the time, but generally, if we want to say it generally moon in Aries is somebody who might speak loudly or who might've had people, you know, me, maybe be abusive in his life as a young person. Now, uh, probably one of the biggest, identifiers aside from black moon Lilith in North node, this is like, this is shady times 10, like energy that you're dealing with, not saying that the victim was shady. So this is real shady, shady money. Okay. And then we've got, God, if I can put this together with no uh, ascendant time, this would be quite a feat, but 
Jupiter is retrograde. Uh, eight degrees is eighth house matters. Could it be possible that there are some kind, there is some kind of gambling debt could be online? So that's, that's a possibility. Marion, you're saying still there's some kind of relationship and some of these victims might not have been involved at all, but definitely with moon and Aries in one of the birth charts sure shows how someone might respond if they got pissed off. And this person would, would have trouble and there would be, it would happen with this group of Leos, lots of cats, lots of, this could be a person that had to deal with bullying in his life. He was a bully and there is a trine to Neptune. So yeah, secrets, you know, secrets maybe. Okay. So, uh, maybe bad food, maybe bad food laced, like if it was a game food that shows up at all. So do you think that maybe they were, uh, you know, they were tempted to come and the host did something? I don't know. I think we got to be careful with those types of suspicions, but somebody holding a glass of wine, I just raised my eyebrow. I mean, how can you not? This is not good optics for them. They need they need a PR person. That's what they need. And yeah, that eighth house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Poison mushrooms. Ooh, that's food. All right, so let's go to the crime chart. Let's... And of course, nobody knew that the mushrooms were poison. Let's just say that to uh, protect ourselves. Of course, this is purely for entertainment only, trying to figure out what happened, being sleuths while looking at the stars. And uh, none of this should be construed as fact. Now we've got, these are the three victims and uh, they love sports. They're going to be Leos. Leos have either a lot of hair or they can be bald. A great example is Prince William. You know, he had a lot of hair to start and then nothing. You know, he's almost bald. So that's such a typical Leo look. Okay, so here's the crime chart. This is around the time that they, that is so weird. The horror that I pulled was in Gemini. What are the chances? So a very similar horary, what's going to happen next to the actual crime chart. Now, uh, what does that mean? I think there's some significance to it. I think what happens next will also be a representative of what happened in the crime, if that makes any sense. So we've got Gemini, and these are the victims. So we're going to look to Mercury. This is going to give us more information. We always look to the Lord. So if you're just getting started with astrology, get really familiar with the Lords. And that's how you're going to start decoding this. Otherwise, you know, just saying, oh, this is in Cancer and this is in uh, Virgo, it's just not going to help. It might help a little bit, but it's not really going to get to the heart. Because why? Why are you trying to do that? Well, you want to look at. Gemini, and you want to see where the victim is. The victim is here in the sixth house. Uh, it, it seems like it could be the hidden enemy to if there is a perpetrator. Now, the perpetrator is represented by the descendant and is going to be Jupiter way up here. And so, what we want to do is we want to figure out if the victims because it's a group, it is a group. So that would be Gemini representing groups. These guys are kind of big guys and that would be Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is also a fire sign too. So these people are going to be uh, excited about, and they might be wearing, wearing red. They might be 
just fiery in a, in a sense where they're excited about something. Now, the biggest telltale sign of what happened was the fact that Neptune is at the top. And this takes away my thought about the gambling or the romance or anything. I put them down on a lower a lower list because of this big T square here. Neptune is going basically going to tell us everything. And this reminds me a little bit of the Delphi crime chart because Neptune was very elevated, which this is. And the person at fault was a pharmacy tech, Richard Allen. And that would give a profile of him. Now, the profile here would be, we're going to get some information from Neptune. This is people who don't, they're not interested in Neptunian things. And this could be drugs. These people might not have wanted to drink as much. They, maybe they were offered something and they were like, no, man, thanks though. So there's a stop there. It's Neptune is blocked. They don't want it, but we've got a perpetrator here. That's Jupiter. He's got money. Taurus. He's an inventor. He's very, uh, forward thinking Uranus with point of fortune and Jupiter. So almost like a very successful inventor or scientist. And the one challenge, because you want to look at the challenge. All right. So this is our guy here who could be a scientist. Looks like he does well for himself. And what is he? He is 11th house. He's a friend. And, you know, he's got some trines here. He might know this guy, this, this guy in who's Mars. So you can see that trine to Mars. And then he's, he knows somebody else here whoever that is. So it almost seems like two people. It could also be intentions too. It doesn't necessarily need to be people. But the, I would say one thing to really consider is that Pluto here, which is a secret. Scientist has a secret in the eighth house. That's weird. Um, now Pluto is in Capricorn. Now here's the other thing. He does not, he's blocking Pluto. It's almost like, well, he, uh, he could be telling the truth that he didn't see the homicide. He was not able to see it. If it's a homicide, it's going to be Pluto. So you see that, that red trine there, that is, that's a scientist not seeing something possibly could also be jealousy. Pluto's jealousy. Eighth house is jealousy and not being able to contain jealousy. It's a possibility. So Pluto seems to be the big challenge here. It's almost and of course, it's sextiling the moon, which is fame, big, big, big fame. There's so much sad cheer. And every time, almost every time we see a stellium in Sagittarius, it's often because the it's going to become like a made-for-TV movie because Sagittarius is, oh no, I shut the volume off. Uh... Hold on one second. I'll double check. Testing seems to be working. Yeah. <laughs> Don't yell at me, Teresa. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that could be, that could be Hollywood. So, you know, famous Hollywood movie usually comes from these things, unfortunately. You know, I know, I know people, there are a lot of people who don't want to hear that right now. Uh, then what was the shock 
But Uranus is going to be the shock. And this is opposing the vertex. And the vertex is very important in a crime chart. I know I say a lot of things are important in a crime chart. But the vertex in Scorpio, that's the point of the chart. So, I mean, we're talking about eighth house. So what's eighth house? It's debts and it's revenge. Uh, sometimes with 15 degrees, it can mean maybe something that is like an assassination. It's the assassination degree. I don't like to use that because, you know, nobody's going to be saying that they were, that anyone was assassinated. But this, this is a major shock here. And it's part of this scientist. I, it, it just seems like he's pretty shocked about it. This, Saturn means that he has access to, you know, it could be like old stuff in the cabinet, you know, old alcohol. Here, let's drink some of this. This is my grandfather's. That could be something. But it really does look like the guy's shocked, even though he seems like he's, the circumstances seem as if they're kind of shady, but there is some type of shock. Let's go to the cards and see. Was uh, was the main planner of this house shocked? And if so, why about that? Uh, okay, and Toy, you're saying... What about love potions, AKA ecstasy or something similar after a bet that went wrong or planned right to look wrong? These guys don't seem like that to me. They, they seem pretty smart to me, even though, you know, we've, we do have at least one victim with moon and Aries, which is kind of a fiery, fiery way about him, but doesn't really make me suspicious in any way. Big Mikey, um, his company's tied to Bill G., that would definitely be a big scientist. So um, what was the question I was going to ask? I can't remember. Um, oh, what was he shocked about? Was he shocked, the person who planned this outing? And what was he shocked about? Five <clears throat> of pentacles. Uh, so... Lack of success, that's what I'm saying. Uh, not being able to open the door, having the answer. Um, you know what? I wonder if that represents that the, the owner was shocked, was really, truly shocked. And because look at five there. Five is like, wouldn't that be five people? So there's great despair of something that's happening. Maybe it was under mind control. Hey, I'm open. <laughs> I mean, that's Pisces. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, you would you would think love would be Leo. So that's a lot of love. And a potion would be Neptune, like ecstasy. Yeah. I don't see these guys doing it. I really don't. Could three step out to smoke a cigar? That cigar tainted. Absolutely. And you know why? Because of North Node. And North Node is a cigar. And so is Leo. Yes. Oh, let me see here. It's so strange, though, that there's not much Leo here in the crime chart. Um, yeah. Uh, squaring the sun. Maybe an old cigar. Yeah, I'd be open to that. 
I would, I would say that would be on my list to check into. North node is Rahu. It's, it not only means deception, but it means smoke. And, you know, it is aspecting the sun and the sun rules things that have to do with smoking and in Capricorn could be an old cigar. So that's, that's a possibility. They were definitely, that would be a great example of like, all right, see you guys, I'm going to bed. And, you know, maybe he was smoking a cigar, but he actually didn't have, you know, the effect that the others did. However, the family and friends, they're saying that they didn't get really good answers. Like if that actually did happen, you would think that the response would be pure panic. I don't know. Let me come over. Let's look for them. What happened? Oh, I'm looking out the window. I see their car there. Well, let me go check. Like that's normal stuff that would happen. So I think uh, maybe there is some kind of genuine shock for something and then maybe potentially a cover up. Of course, my opinion only. Yeah, the guy that lived there went to bed. Yes. So this, this represents the five of pentacles is, uh, you know, the key, not having the key to something. I don't know. This company was working with the AIDS vaccine. More plausible that they died inside and later dragged outside. I agree. Fentanyl laced. When you see shocking things like this, it's usually about fentanyl. And there may be some kind of, I don't know, uh, theme behind it. Like maybe there was a problem with a relationship or something like that. Let's ask, let's ask, uh, is this, does this have anything to do, spirit, with a relationship that, that went wrong? Okay. Seven of cups. Somebody who's trying to make a decision on a beach. Seven, too. I wonder... This is, this is a good card normally. It would be something where, you know, you've got a lot of options here. Cups is generally a good thing. But this person, interesting that he has a cap on like an Irishman would. Hmm. That's all I'm going to say. Somebody has a lot of options. <sighs> options for girlfriends? Uh, I don't know. All right. I'm seeing a lot of question marks. Cicada, what if they smoked a least joint of marijuana? That would be more plausible, I think. All right. So a blunt mercury. Okay. Let me see. See, I did it. I'm getting good. All right, Mercury is something that is small. Neptune could be alcohol or drugs. I'm afraid to say that something that is small. Now, these are obviously the victims. They're Sagittarius is having fun, being optimistic. And they a square would be something where this is looking down into the 10th house. This is any anybody, they're going to look as if they're looking straight down into the living room and they're seeing whatever is in here. And they're probably going, we would probably see two things because this is a 10th house, my little drone house. And you see Saturn and you see Neptune. And Saturn can be death, death drug. Now, moon is, I want to bet it was, it was something very, I don't really think it was that nefarious. These guys were not doing 
crazy secretive things. I think that that's a very good possibility. I'm, I think that's my number one is that there's something Saturn, like a, some kind of a death drug. And now moon is trining this. So I wonder what that is. Uh, this could be a person from work, you know? Yeah. This, this buddy of mine, one of my coworkers, he gave this to me. You guys want to smoke one? And that was that. Uh, so moon, if you're like, uh, what's the moon represent? Well, in this case, it's going to represent the second house of buying and selling. Third house is really buying and selling. Second house is, is something that's valuable. So whatever this is, is seems to have value in the drug. I don't know if it's marijuana, but this is somebody's asset that's part of this equation. They find it valuable. And it could be a very famous thing that they find valuable, a drug, you know, some something that everybody knows. Pluto means lots and lots. Moon is fame. So lots and lots of fame for this particular Neptunian item. So I don't like to say alcohol and drugs. I mean, we don't know what it is, but usually it is. It can be a scam. It can be a scandal. It could be a famous scandal. You can see Neptune and Moon is a famous scandal. And... Yeah, I think it's I think it's a little more clean or clear cut than that. I th I think it's something that's everyday Joe, and uh, potentially was just shocking. Now all three may have taken part of this, and that's what this forensic lab is trying to figure out how they died. There was you would think that initially the cops would say, was there, were there any marks on them? Anything like that? No, not, not that we can see. And so potentially that's why they wouldn't say any information. So it could be that the wounds are internal. The 11th house is so prominent. Why? It's got five planets in there. That is pretty, that's important. Uh, this person just makes a lot of money, you know? And in the 11th house, these are friends, friends that are wearing red. These are the chiefs right here. This is the chief's house, like we said last time. And this is an opposition here with, with Pluto, uh, with Scorpio. That's what really throws me off is that Scorpio. You know, what is going on there? Why Scorpio? Okay, so if it was if it was drugs, you know, they were just gonna smoke, you know, just take a smoke. What would that be? Uh somebody else's, maybe. Somebody else's drugs that they were they just trusted their buds. That's a possibility. Because Scorpio represents somebody else's. So uh Yes. Oh, Heather's here. Thanks for coming in. You uh, thankfully didn't miss all of the audio shenanigans. And all right, Marion's gone. Now, that's where I was with my questions, the edibles. Oh, my God. Very good point. Very good point. I think a lot of people are saying that, Big Mikey. Have I done a chart for midnight? No, because it seemed like it could be a lie, but I might do that next time. I might do that next time. I'm going to do one more chart or one more uh, card. 
And then, um, and then we'll talk a little bit more about tomorrow. Okay. Uh, is this spirit, can you tell us, does this have to do with accidental exposure to a chemical? Three of swords. Okay. Again, the, the, the love and romance card is coming up. That doesn't have to do with marijuana. This is three of swords. It's a female again with a broken heart reversed. So it's possible that sometimes people just want to relax because they're going through a breakup. So I wonder if that might be the next thing that we hear about is that there was some type of breakup. I know. Val, one of the victim's car keys and phone is still missing. Oh, are you serious? Okay, I didn't know that. Uh, all right, let's take a look at it. So car keys are right here. And if you ever want to look for your car keys and you're doing a horary, you can look at Mercury. Mercury's keys, they're small. There's a group of them. There's a group of keys normally. And yeah, it looks like it looks like it's in the seventh house of the place where they were. And it's going to be very hard to find them because of Neptune. Neptune is squaring them. For some reason, they're hidden. Doesn't look like they're going to be able to find them, at least, at least for a while. Uh, third house, too, can also be keys. And third house is representative of Gemini and Leo. So you would put Leo together with third house of keys. So you could say, uh, you know, the, as an example, the athlete's keys or the sports lover's keys. And that's going to be the sun here. Eighth house. Uh, just hidden. Eighth house is hidden. And right in the if there's a killer, the killer's domain. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to figure out, but it it seems like the keys are pretty close to where the victims were found. Just you can't see them because of Neptune. Neptune just puts a, a fog or a haze, and they all have a haze. That's really what it is. Twenty five degrees is the Aries degree. So this is uh, the chief's haze. Aries would be the chief. Neptune, chief's haze. And there would be a group that would experience it, experience this. And I wonder what that is. It's almost like... Now, Sagittarius can mean... Court cases can mean a group of court cases. It can mean uh, a university. And the U.S. So this is like a U.S. U.S. scandal of some sort. It is definitely a scandal. Look how high that Neptune is. So... You know, it depends on how much you want to say Neptune is strong. If you want it to be really strong, you could say it is because of moon. Moon, it means fame. And so this would be a famous scandal. And Pluto would add to it. So it seems like there's got to be more to it than just some laced blunts. Because if this is going to have that much fame, it's also a famous mystery too. So Neptune is a mystery. Now, the next thing that's going to happen to 
this, if it's a perpetrator, it looks like something unexpected is going to happen to him. Uh, he's, it looks like there's going to be more of some kind of a, is that opposition? Pluto is investigators. So there's going to be some kind of investigation and I think it's probably going to affect him negatively for whatever reason. Uh, you know what Uranus means, but I'm not going to say it. Let's just say it means something unexpected. So Kay says, did one of the guests see something on the host's phone or maybe on his laptop? I would guess it would be phone because the laptop probably wouldn't be sitting around. It's a good question. Uh, they weren't leaving if they didn't have their keys and things, in my opinion. Good point. MSN is pushing the cover-up story, allegedly. Yeah, Neptune scores the Ascendant too. Yeah, they didn't see what they what was overhead in a sense. They didn't see what they were getting into. They might have not even seen any drugs or alcohol. It was, they were completely, when there's a square to Neptune, you can't see anything. Now, recently, Heather, you said the last time they were seen was around 2 a.m. I looked at the FBA message and the only thing that throws me off about it was the date that she took the screenshot didn't seem right. So I know what you're saying about lies. Yeah, exactly. I know. How do all of these people, it, we talked about this last time. Notice that there is that sleep issue. I think there was even that with the, uh, the Delphi case and that's Neptune. You're going to hear a lot of things about fish, a lot of things about drugs, things about, um, you know, sleeping. So all these ma massively major de deaths and then law enforcement is like, nothing to see here, moving along. It's like, oh, okay. So now Neptune is also a mirror and, oh, a mirror. And it's also glass. Yeah, we were talking about that. Uh, I think this is a person that, this could be an old drug, okay? Because Pisces is drugs. Saturn is, you know, can be old, can be black, can be something that's black. And black water would be an example. Like if you were to start a company that was called black water, it's highly likely that it might be Saturn in in uh, Pisces. So there's like a clue. Uh, maybe there's some kind of connection with black water. I don't know. But uh, whatever it is, there's a square to the moon. And that shows that they don't like the public knowing what they're doing. Carrie, thank you. You're so sweet. Uh, this case is unlikely to go to trial because they don't want discovery on his employment and work very interesting. And we're going to keep a look at that. We might as well talk about it. I'm a little nervous about doing that, which, which is one of the reasons I haven't been doing it, but what the hell let's look at it from a work perspective. So if we've got, it's not their work, it's their friend's work. So if we were to look at the friend, there's two ways we could look at his work. One two, three, four, five, six. That would be his job. Yikes, Black Moon Lilith. Thank God these big corporate types don't know what I'm talking about when I say Black Moon Lilith. Whoa. Okay, so this friend has, and look at that, Virgo's health. So there is, there's something, things that make you go, hmm, about work can't sue me for that because, you know, hmm is not anything legal, <laughs> but you know what I'm getting at one. Okay. That's what you do. 11th house is friend. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's, let's see if we can see something about his career. So it would be six and then, well, it would be it would be the 10th house. 
So we would go to six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and it would be this would be his career, which would be Capricornian, which might be the government. I uh, don't know if he work. Does he work for the government? Okay. Well, for one thing, this is going to mess up what he's trying to do. Now that's his boss, that son. When you look at your chart and you see son, that's somebody's boss. So, uh, hmm. I don't know. It's a crime chart. I'm going to look at it as the, the killer because if there was one, because that's the co-ruler of the killer. Now, Jupiter is in the 11th house of friends. Okay. This is somebody, someone who has a lot of money. And then these are the chiefs. They might have tats. I didn't see, they're kind of Gen X people. So not as many tats as the younger set, but it does seem like there's some kind of tattoos because Chiron has tattoos. And we really have to see the 11th house Lord. That's the friend. And they're old friends. Saturn is old and it trines Mars. So these are old friends. Yeah, I don't, an old friends, successful old friends. I don't see anything from the friendship side of it. I don't see somebody trying to kill someone else. I really don't. I'm really going out on a limb here, but I'm just being honest. It's the Neptune. Neptune is, it's hard for us to see. It's like opening your eyes with no goggles. Even with goggles, you're going to try to look at the end of the pool and it's going to be a little bit foggy. You're not going to be able to see. So as far as the answer with the friends, okay, how about this for a card? Uh, let's see. Uh, can you tell us any more that we don't know spirit about the friends, the friends of the Missouri city victims? Tell us more about the friends and the friendship. The chariot. Whoa. You guys have been saying stuff about a driver. That's weird because that's the driver right there. Is there a driver involved? Did someone, these people, and sometimes it's very, sometimes it's uh, kind of innocent. You know, it's like, yeah, I mean, they knew each other because they all drove for whatever, you know. And, uh, yes, I will do that. Mary saying one of the guys shared some contraband and it was bought for someone else. That person had no clue of its toxicity. I think that's a, a very, I think it's very high on my list because you've got Scorpio and then you've got a square with Neptune. Normally, if you've got people who really like drugs, you're going to see a trine, but this was like, these people didn't know. I, I really I really think, and yeah, maybe the, I know Billy, you've been saying that, but does that have something to, does that say something about the friendship though? Now there's a black and white horse. So there, that could represent the two guys who drove in later. One's a nice guy and one's not so nice. So that could be a really good clue. I think, I think we've got, We've got uh, an outlier, as they say. We've got the dark horse. There you go. There's the dark horse. There's a dark horse in there. Okay, no problem, Heather. Now, um, can you ask the spirit about the fifth person? Yes, Billy, a lot of things, hidden things in Neptune. The fifth person, let's see what we can get. 
which was a shocker. I mean, the fourth person that came out, we were like, what? Now it's a fifth? Uh, anybody else, guys? Let's see. So can you tell us? Uh, maybe this will give us a hint about the dark horse versus the white horse. Uh, can you tell us, Spirit, a little bit about the fifth person? And this being not construed as fact. So 10 of wands. So somebody that is uh, transporting something and walking away. So the fifth person would like to move away from this. And uh, yep, that all, all that stuff happened on that mountain, Leo mountain. But, uh, but I'm going this way. So see you guys later. That's a possibility. Hmm. There's some stuff in there. It's like a box. Ten of Wands is uh, moving on. So I think that's all I'm getting really for the fifth person. Interesting, we're going to be talking about five people because that's a Leo number. Crazy. I, I look at uh, Mr. Beast sometimes, who's like the biggest YouTuber. He's a big Leo. His name is Beast. Beast is a Leo name. And he always has, he's either one of five guys that go around on YouTube, or he has five friends. There's always five around him. So, oh, hey, Angel D, how are you? And uh, what really gets you, Heather? Um, everybody? It's a good question, or it's a good comment. Kay, I heard that the host Willis had gambling problems. That would certainly be reflected. Of course, it's just my opinion and not facts. Uh, you know, sometimes when we hear see, hear things, we just see them online. And uh, <laughs> Mickey Middlesbrough, UK, that is an interesting comment. And yeah, I mean, I think it was, I really do think that it was an innocent type of thing. These guys are family men. One's going to get married. They're going to do things that are middle of the road. They don't want to, you know, they don't want to do anything risky. They're going to go watch the game. And, and I'm sure there are things that are being said within the family where there was information saying, oh, I'll be home tonight or you know, when will we see you again? There might have even been texts from one of them to their family members, which I'm hoping comes out next. That's going to be Gemini. That's Gemini. When we were looking at that earlier, that's going to be those texts that we might see, the communications that, that are hidden now that are going to come out, I think. Now, uh, please hit the like button if you haven't already. And uh, if you like this show and Love if you could subscribe and also join and become a valedictorian. Tomorrow we are uh, we're talking about Prince William, and uh, that will be the 29th. And 29 is a good number for Leo because it's the Regulus number 29. So uh, thanks, Heather. <laughs> Yeah, it's still a little bit cold now, but hope you can join me tomorrow. We're going to look at the birth chart of Prince William, and we're going to probably have some more updates on this case too as information becomes available. So it'll be really interesting later on to see how these cards potentially gave us answers we didn't know about. So great blue hair. That's a good number. Nice. And... All right, so we will see you uh, probably in the next day or so. And I'm going to be having content all this week. I stopped last week because I tend to not like to be on YouTube right as a major planet is coming out of retrograde. So you can see that with my audio problems. But uh, hopefully Uranus is really coming out of that retrograde now. And all this week you'll be seeing some new stuff. So. We'll see you soon. Thanks again for everybody tuning in and talk to you tomorrow.